So we talked about how long the test was. Earlier question. Let's talk about how does cat end when this one's nine lives are over. Or I hope you notice a brand new cat for you because we drew it specially for you guys. So there are three ways in the cat that we're talking about in the computer adaptive form. And these have a lot of fancy words in there. So let's sort of dig a little deep into it because it actually can provide you with some insights as to how to attack this cat. One is confidence interval rule. So I think I talked about it in an earlier video, the computer, as it takes you through different questions and chooses different questions for you, they become more and more sure whether you, will, you're, you're, you are falling above the passing line or the below the passing line. And that's called the interval. And as you, they find out more about you, the interval is going to become narrower and narrower. At the same time, that interval is moving either below or above the, the passing line. So when that full interval, and they say in their, in the CISSP uh, this booklet, they say 95% they're sure. That whoever is in that place is going to pass. When they're that sure, they'll say, okay, we don't need to actually continue the exam because this candidate has seen at least 100 questions and the, uh, we're very, very sure because all of the full intervals staying above the passing line. At that point, exam will end. So that is the confidence interval rule. 100 questions you've seen, the full interval is above the passing line. That's one. The second one is called maximum length rule. I left the rule out just because I wanted to save some space. So what is a maximum length rule? It's when you run out of 150 questions. So they will throw you as many as 150 questions in those three hour period. And they're not quite sure as the intervals probably straddling that passing pass line. So they're trying to figure out, okay, I'm gonna throw this candidate another question, and they're still not well sure because that straddle or the interval is either not fully above or not fully below the level, passing line. If you're fully above, because of rule number one, you'll pass. If it's fully below, because of the confidence index rule, confidence interval rule, you'll fail. But they're gonna to continue to throw you questions. And if you somehow run out of question at 150, all they're gonna to to do is look at that midpoint of the interval, in interval and say, well, this midpoint is above the passing line. This candidate will pass. That midpoint is below the uh, passing line, so you will fail. So that's what maximum length rule is. It's about 150 questions, okay? So, as we talked about in the earlier question about how does CAT end, uh, or uh, how long is a CAT exam, you actually could run out of question, which is the, I love this sort of acronym, run out of time rule, otherwise known as root rule. That's what it's called, root rule. So, you somehow ran out of time because you had three hours to finish this exam, and you couldn't, they, the computer couldn't figure out whether you will pass or fail based on either the confidence index interval rule or the maximum length rule, whatever it is. And at that point, what this root rule is going to do, it gets a little complicated here because it's got a lot of uh, conditions you have to think about. One is, in order to pass, you at least have to go through 100 questions. That's the given rule. That is, if you didn't finish 100 questions by the time you run out of question, you fail. So nothing to discuss. So now let's say you got, you passed this. So you say, yes, you actually answered on your questions. And then at that point, what it's going to do is it's gonna actually look at your last 75 questions and see how you're doing it. So I'm, I think, I don't know whether you can see it or not, so I'm gonna draw it up here. So it's gonna look at last 75 questions that you, uh, you performed and see how has this candidate done on those last 75 questions when that candidate ran out of time. And that during this time, if those, inter I'm sorry, those midpoints were somehow below the passing line, and let's assume here, this was the passing line, and so as your, as your midpoints are moving up and down, moving up and down this sort of, uh, uh, this passing line, and if you ever dipped, ever so slightly dip below this line, they're gonna say, all right, this candidate does not pass. So 
Once again, let me rephrase this the question because it's a little complicated, but it, it's a two-step thing. Very first thing, have you answered on your questions? The answer is yes, then they're gonna look at this. If the answer is no, then it's fail. So if the answer is yes, they're gonna look at your last 75 questions and then look at in terms of what they determine to be the passing point based on how you're answering those questions. And if at all times you're above the passing line, then you pass. If you somehow, have, even for one question, you went below that, then you fail. So let's recap because actually this is important and these are confusing. So one, first one, confidence interval rule. When the interval is either above or below the passing line after you did the first minimal number of questions in for CISSB 100 questions, you either pass or fail, one. The second one is maximum length question. 150 questions, right? So you, during the three hours, you went through 150 questions. At that point, they'll look at where your performance is. If your actual midpoint is above the line, you pass. Below the line, fail. Run out of time. You ran out of time. First rule is, have you answered 100 questions? If it's yes, you look at your 75 questions back and see if any, during any point, you, whether you went below the passing line, if you did, fail. If you didn't, and this, this I'm going to do a passing one, if you didn't, you pass. If you did not answer on your question by the time you run out of time, you fail. So those are the three ways that CAT can end.